So now we're back from lab and we want to put it together and see what we can learn from that lab. So quick reminder, refraction can be used to bend light, which allows us to make lenses. And these lenses can form images. And we say that the image is real if the light rays actually converge on the other side of the lens uh, on a point in space. And so that's what we call a real image. So in lab, when you guys investigated the distance to the image and the distance to the object, your original data looked like this. And it's kind of hard to make sense of a graph like this. It looks a little bit like a rational function, but with some asymptotes. So it turns out that as this graph gets closer and closer to 3, it goes to infinity. And it never gets below 3 on this axis either. So instead of 0, 0 being our asymptotes, which is a rational function, we have asymptotes at 3 and at 3 here. So that makes this difficult to analyze, which is why we gave you a clue or a hint on how to graph it. So what we're going to do is we're going to regraph it. Instead of graphing the distance to the image, we're going to graph 1 over the distance to the image and 1 over the distance to the object. And when you did that, you got a graph that looked like this. Okay, And so one of the things we wanted you to do is make sure you showed 0, 0, and that you also scaled the y-axis so we can see the intercept here. All right, so this is a fairly straight line. There is not a proportional relationship. It does not go through 0, 0, but at least it's linear. So we can use y equals mx plus b to find a mathematical model. So when your computer finds the best fit line for you, you get an equation that looks something like this. y equals the slope, which was negative 1, or pretty darn close, 0.99 or 1.01. So the y equals negative 1 times x, plus the intercept, which is about 0.33. Now we want to rewrite this using the variables that make sense for our problem. So on the y-axis, we have 1 over the distance to the image. So we're going to have 1 over the distance to the image equals negative 1 times our x-axis, which is 1 over the distance to the object. So here's y equals the slope times x plus the intercept. And instead of writing the intercept, as 0.33, I'm going to write that as 1 over 3. Since we're writing everything else as 1 over, let's write 0.33 as 1 over 3. And so you might sort of wonder, whoa, look at that, that 1 third, that was the asymptotes. Oh, wait a minute, that was the focal length of the lens we used in lab. So that's kind of where that comes from. So we found this relationship in lab, <clears throat> 1 over the distance to the image, that was on the y-axis, equals the slope, negative 1, times the x variable, 1 over the distance to the object, plus 1 over our focal length. This was our intercept. Okay. We can rearrange this. We can bring the 1 over the distance to the object to the other side of the equation, and it'll become positive. And then it can be written like this. 1 over the focal length of a lens equals 1 over the distance to the object plus 1 over the distance to the image. This is the lens maker's equation. All right, and it's one of the two pieces we're going to use to solve problems, but we'll, uh, we'll write that down in a minute. So let's just move on one more step here. Let's suppose we want to solve a problem. I've got a 20 centimeter converging lens. We're going to form an image. The object is 5 centimeters tall, and it's 40 centimeters from the lens, and I want to know where does the image form and what is the size of the image. So if I were to solve this geometrically by drawing the rays of light, this is what my solution would look like. And we are not going to do this. One of the things that got uh, chopped out of our curriculum because of the limited amount of time we have is these, uh, these geometric solutions. So we're not going to make them, but I just want to show you an important idea here. If this is my lens, it's what bends the light. And this is what we call the optical axis running side to side. Let me grab a pointer here. So this is my optical axis right here. Here's my object. It is 40 centimeters from the lens. And here's my focal length, which is 20 centimeters. So there's a focal length on both sides of the lens. Here's the lens. And imagine this is a candle sending out light in all directions. So there is some candlelight going this direction. We don't care about it. There's some candlelight going this direction. We don't care about it. We're going to pick out three special rays of that candlelight. One of the rays of light leaves that candle going um, straight this way. So it is parallel to the optical axis. And we know that light that is parallel to the optical axis or perpendicular to the lens gets bent through the focal point, And then it keeps going forever and ever and ever. It gets, goes that way. And one of the beams of light, another one of interest, 
is the one that goes through the center of the lens. And the center of the lens doesn't bend the light at all. So it just keeps going straight and it goes that way. And then another special beam of light is the one that heads this way. If it goes through the focal point, when it hits the lens, it gets bent parallel. And so it heads off this way. And so you can see that all three of those beams of light converge at this point right here. So there would be a bright little candle image over on this side of the, um, of the lens. <coughs> now, the thing I want to show you is that if you think about the line that goes through the middle of the lens, which does not get bent, if this straight line and this straight line, the optical axis, intersect, then the two angles here and here are congruent. They're the same angle. That's from geometry. And if you have two triangles that have a congruent angle, you know that the ratios of their sides are equal. So, for example, if I took this distance right here, so see how it's kind of highlighted in yellow here? This distance here, the height of the object, divided by this side of the triangle, is going to be the same as this length divided by that length. And since this length is the height of the image and this is the distance to the image, we can say the height of the object divided by the distance to the object is equal to the height of the image divided by the distance to the image. Okay? We can also construct that ratio a slightly different way. We can write it like this. We can say, well, this side of the triangle, the height of the image, divided by this, the height of the object, is equal to the distance to the image. That's this distance divided by the distance to the object. And that's what I've written here. The height of the image divided by the height of the object is the same as the distance to the image divided by the distance to the object. And we actually call that the magnification of the lens. So if you take, if this is 10 centimeters, I'm sorry, if this is five centimeters tall and this is five centimeters tall, then five centimeters, the height of the image, divided by five centimeters, the height of the object, equals one. The magnification is one. It's the same size. If this image was bigger than the object, the magnification would be bigger than one. And we'll have an example of that in a minute. All right, so that's kind of where this equation comes from. It's basically ratios of similar triangles from the geometry of the problem. So here is what we end up with. And at this point, you should pause the video and write this down on your toolbox because this is the important thing we're going to use. There are two equations which govern the relationships between the various quantities that interest us with lenses. The first one is called the lens maker's equation. It's 1 over f equals 1 over do plus 1 over di. And do is the distance to the object, di is the distance to the image, and of course f is the focal length of the lens. All right. The second equation is that the magnification is the height of the image divided by the height of the object. And because um, if this height is below the axis, we say that's negative. We would actually say the magnification of this is negative 1. And so to account for that negative, we're going to have negative the distance to the image over the distance to the object. So you can find the magnification two ways. You can use the ratios of the height of the image to the height of the object, or you can use the ratio of the distance to the image divided by the distance to the object. Okay, so pause the video, write those down, and then uh, here are two examples showing how to solve problems using those. Okay? Okay, so the problem we're trying to solve is a 20 centimeter converging lens that's used to form an image. So it's most helpful if you just go ahead and make a variable list because we know what we're looking for when we meet the problem. We know we are going to have a focal length. We know we're going to have a distance to the object, a distance to the image, the height of the object, and eventually we're going to find the height of the image and possibly the magnification. So these are the variables we're interested in. So it helps to write them down first so that as you read the problem, you can kind of fill them in. Now it says a 20 centimeter converging lens. That means the focal length is 20 centimeters, and if it's converging, it's positive. So there we go. It said it's used to form an image. The object is 5 centimeter tall candle, so that's the height of the object. It's 5 centimeters. And it says it is 40 centimeters from the lens. So that is the distance to the object. This is 40 centimeters. And the question asks, where does the image form? So what is the location of the image? And what is the size of the image? So we're going to have to find the height of the image too. Okay? So it helps to kind of 
first uh, get a handle on what you're given in the problem. Now, the diagram we're not going to spend too much time working on, but basically it's going to look something like this. You're going to have an optical axis, you're going to have a lens, and if the focal length is 20 centimeters, I'm just going to call that like there. Okay, so that's the focal length there. And the important thing is that the object is 40 or twice as far. So I'm going to draw a little object over here, like a candle or something. And the important thing is that the focal length, if that's 20, then that's about 40. It's about two times the focal length. Okay? And we can trace a couple of the beams of light. They're not too hard. And you can just kind of make a rough sketch here. One beam of light heads straight to the lens. And when it hits the lens, it gets bent through the focal point and it keeps going. That's one beam of light. Another beam of light goes through the middle of the lens, and the one that hits the middle doesn't get bent at all. So you can see it kind of goes like that. So you can kind of get the idea that the image is going to be over here. So it's actually going to be upside down. So there's our image. So that's kind of just a rough diagram that helps us figure out um, what's going on. Now, our equations. So the first thing we want to do is find the distance to the image. So here's what we got. We have 1 over the focal length equals 1 over the distance to the object plus 1 over the distance to the image. And we would like to solve for the distance to the image. Okay? So to find the distance to the image, the first thing I'm going to do is bring this term to the other side. So I'm going to have 1 over f minus 1 over the distance to the object. That equals 1 over the distance to the image. And then, once I find the left-hand side, I will take its reciprocal. Because the left-hand side of this expression is going to tell me 1 over di. So then i got to take the reciprocal to find di. i got to flip it. Okay? So um, let's go ahead and do this in two steps. So this may not be a complete algebraic solution. But let's take 1 over f, which is um, 1 over... 20 minus 1 over do, which is 1 over 40, and that equals 1 over di. 120, 120th minus 140th. Um, you can think of this, you can multiply this by 2 over 2, and so you'll have 2 40ths minus 1 40th equals 1 40th. Okay, so 1 over the distance to the image is 1 over 40. That's what I figured out from this right hand side, and you can use your calculator if you wanted. So, the distance to the image is going to be 1 over 1 over 40, 1 over this thing right here, the reciprocal, and that is just 40 centimeters. Okay? So it turns out the distance to the um, image is also 40 centimeters, and you can kind of see that from your, your diagram here. The distance from here to here is about the same as the distance from there to there. Okay? So that was part A. And now we want to find the size or the height of the image. So the second thing we're going to use is the fact, so this is part um, B here, because it's part B. We know that, um, based on our equation, that the distance to the image, now let's see, it was like this, negative the distance to the image over the distance to the object equals the height of the image over the height of the object. And we're trying to solve for the height of the image. Okay, so to find the height of the image there, we just need to multiply both sides by HO. So the height of the image is going to equal negative the distance to the image divided by the distance to the object. That's this side of the equation times the height of the object. Okay, so this is negative I'm running out of room here. But this is negative 40 over 40, which is negative 1. Negative 1 times the height of the object, which is 5, is negative 5. So it turns out that the image is also 5 centimeters tall. It's just upside down. All right. So that's how you use the lens maker's equation. That's this equation. And the equation for the magnification. So this is really the magnification equation right here. And um, we use them to solve for the distance to the image and the height of the image. All right, and one more example to kind of help uh, make this solid. I know it's a bit of a pain to kind of watch these, but it'll help you a lot when you go to solve the problems yourself to kind of have an understanding of how it works. So here's another example.
So in this case, we have a 10 centimeter converging lens. All right, so for our second, second example, um, we have our variable list here. And um, we're just going to fill it out as we read the problem. It says a 10 centimeter converging lens. So we know the focal length is 10 centimeters. And it's positive. We're not going to do anywhere they're negative, um, but the lenses, um, but that's a, a branch of problems that are um, possible to solve. Um, it says it's used to form an image. The object is two centimeter tall candle. So that is the height of the object. It is 2.0 centimeters tall. And um, it says it's 15 centimeters from the lens. So the distance from the lens to the object is 15 centimeters. And it asks us to find the distance to the image. So we're going to find this in part A. Then it asks us to find the magnification, and it asks us to find the height of the image. So these are the three things we're going to find. Okay, so let's start off with a sketch. So we just kind of draw an optical axis. We draw a lens, and we make a little tick on either side about equal distance, and that's the focal length. Okay, now if that focal length, if this is 10 centimeters, and the object is at 15 centimeters, then my object is more like this kind of about there, okay? It's not twice, so if this was 10, that would be 20, 15, somewhere in between. We don't need to measure it exactly. We can do that and make a geometric solution, but we're just kind of eyeballing it. So now we have to draw two beams of light. One beam of light goes parallel. There's many beams of light. They go in all directions, but we're just picking out one of them. And the one that goes parallel gets bent through the focal point, and it keeps on going. And then one of them goes through the center of the lens, and it keeps on going, and they meet over here. So our image is going to be over here somewhere, okay? So that's kind of what we're looking for to see if, that, uh, if that's kind of what happens. All right, so we are going to start with our lens maker's equation. So we are going to um, use 1 over f equals 1 over the distance to the object plus 1 over the distance to the image. And our first job is to solve this for the distance to the image. Okay? So it turns out that you can write it like this. Um, 1 over the distance to the image equals 1 over the focal length minus 1 over the distance to the object. Right? If you bring this term here to the other side, and if this expression on the right-hand side is 1 over the distance to the image, then we can actually write it like this. The distance to the image itself is actually 1 over this whole mess. 1 over f minus 1 over the distance to the object. Okay? So you can kind of use that as a template to help you solve the problems. All right, we can plug in our numbers now. You take 1 over f, so that's 1 over 10, minus 1 over 15. And whatever answer you get from that, you take 1 over it, and it turns out this equals 30 centimeters. So the distance to the image, we have found out, is 30 centimeters. Okay? So that was step one. Step two, we need to find the magnification. So the magnification can be written like this. The magnification is negative the distance to the image divided by the distance to the object. That's one of the equations we just showed and worked on in our toolbox. So that's going to be negative 30 centimeters divided by the distance to the object, which is 15 centimeters. And negative 30 over 15 is negative 2. So the magnification is negative 2. Um, and that means that the image is two times bigger than the object, and the negative means it's upside down. Okay? So I'll put a box around my answers here. The third thing we were asked to find is the height of the image. And so the height of the image, remember the magnification also equals the height of the image divided by the height of the object. And so if we want the height of the image, we can multiply both sides by the height of the object. So the height of the image is going to be the magnification times the height of the object. The magnification is negative 2. The height of the object was 2, so negative 2 times 2. Um, I guess I could sneak that in here. So the magnification. It's going to be, um, I'm sorry, the height of the image is going to be the magnification, which is negative 2 times the height of the object, which was 2 centimeters. And so that's negative 4 centimeters. Okay? So there we go. We found all three things. We found that, that um, 
object, excuse me, the image is 30 centimeters from the lens, which kind of makes sense, right? Because if this is 10, there's 20, that's more, a little more than 20. Our diagram's not perfect, but it shows us that it's kind of out there. We can see from the diagram that the image is actually bigger and it's upside down. And so those all agree with our solutions there. Okay? So you guys are going to solve some problems that look like this now.